Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to continue our look at the Live Coding Toolkit for Pure Data. In uh, recent videos on the Live Coding Toolkit, we've um, been looking at pitch based music and um, music that's sort of metrical in structure. Today, we're going to look at something a little bit more sort of ambient, uh, see how that goes with the Live Coding Toolkit. So just to remind you, the uh, Live Coding Toolkit is um, an additional library to add to Pure Data. Uh, you can download it from uh, this site on GitHub. Um, when you do that, you'll need to go to the preferences and change the path so that um, the Live Coding Toolkit folder is available um, for PD to see. All right. so. Um, in particular today we're going to um, look a fair bit at random functions and also ramping between various functions as well. So in order to start our piece today we'll begin with just some sort of background sort of scattered noise um, as a little ambient background. So I'm going to start with the noise object and use a threshold object to um, capture whenever the noise data happens to be um, pretty high. When we do that, um, that will give us a bang and that will help us to trigger a, uh, a V-line. The V-line message that we're going to send is just a short blip and that goes to our V-line object. Um, that in turn uh, will go to a multiply object in order to control the volume. I might just put that in this side because uh, we also need to make sure that that noise comes down as a sound source to that amplifying process as well. Um, once we've done that we'll introduce a few more of the live coding toolkit objects. So we'll use the panner object to do some stereo panning We'll use the echo um, object to produce some delays. Um, these arguments are around the delay time and the feedback amount. And then we use the live coding toolkits out um, to send it to the DAC. There is some stereo going on here we need to account for. Okay, so that's just a little bit of um, background clicking and noise to keep us entertained. I might just give myself a volume control for that. I just use this number box going into the volume thing. I can Turn that up and down. I just keep it going quietly in the background while we continue. Um, so now we might put in that sort of high frequency thing. Let's put in some low frequency um, elements. We'll start actually. Let's start with a toggle, um, which will then go into a metronome to give us some time. We're just going to trigger every second. And we'll use the gate object from uh, the live coding toolkit in order to filter out some of those so that we're getting sort of um, a random selection of them coming through some of the time. Um, that can then go to a bang. So whenever that happens, that just allows us to see what's going on. Then a few objects we're going to put. We're going to use the, some random object from the Life Coding Toolkit. So that's the center of the randomness and the deviation, those two arguments. Um, and that will, we're going to use that to produce um, a MIDI pitch. That MIDI pitch is going to go into an FM, the basic kind of FM synth object we've got in the Life Coding Toolkit. Just send that to the pitch inlet. Um, and then we need to amplify that, give it an amplitude envelope. Um, we'll come back to fixing that in a second. And then we'll do similar things that we did earlier. I'm going to put it into a panner. And we're going to put it into an echo for some delays. 
arguments for that and then we're going to send that out like so oops spell out so you can start to see a bit of a pattern here the live coding coding toolkits outlets uh, for adding some effects um, so we need it's currently zero volume we need to provide a volume envelope for that so we'll use the V line to do that volume envelope and we need to pass the V line a message It'll be very simple we're going to also just do a very short um, base pulse here and we'll trigger that at the same time as we trigger the note oops and I think that should be all Okay, so um, that is going. Its pitch will be quite low, and depending on the loudspeakers that you're using to listen to this video, you may or may not hear it every time it plays. But uh, that's some low pitch sounds and some high pitch sounds. Okay, so let's get to, in a sense, the core of what's going on today with some of these sort of drone kind of sounds. Um, so. We're going to also have a metronome to control our drone sounds. So we're just going to set that up here. Um, it's going to go quite infrequently every 10 seconds. So it's just going to do stuff from time to time. We'll put a bang in there. Uh, then we're going to, again, as I promised, we're going to use quite a bit of randomness in this particular episode. Uh, again, this is going to produce for us some MIDI pitches um, centered around 50 with a deviation of 20. Um, and I'm going to introduce the ramp object um, in the live coding toolkit. And it will go from the previous pitch, whatever that was, to this newly randomly generated pitch um, again over 10 seconds. So it's going to be a slow glide up to that. We will also send that to the FM um, synthesizer, but this time we'll give it some arguments. These um, relate to frequency modulation characteristics, uh, which I really, in this case, only really want just like a um, uh, an LFO kind of effect rather than frequency modulation synthesis. Um, this is the attack and the release time and some glide between the pitches as well. Then, like before, we'll send that to a panner and to um, a delay line and then send it out. Oops, out. Okay, so we set all that up. The echo. The left and the right outlets connected. be making a noise there it goes it was just ramping up from uh, zero frequency which of course is too low for us to hear so it's uh, moving its way up into the audible spectrum now it's still fairly quiet but uh, we'll get there eventually so in the meantime whilst we're waiting that to sort of kick in what we want to do is to control some of these things so we get some variation um, in what's going on so this uh, pattern here of generating a random number and then ramping between the previous one and the next one we're going to use a few times so i'm going to copy that um, and paste it again uh, this time i'm going to use it i'm going to connect it you'll see here to the panner so I'm going to use this to change the panning, um, automate the panning. Panning ranges from 0 to 1, so I'm going to start uh, with the center, but you can see 0 0.5 and have a range of 0 0.5, so that will um, go between those values as we need to, and we'll bang that so that each time we get a different um, frequency response there. This is still quite low, so I might just turn it up a bit so we can 
hopefully hear something a bit more clearly. Um, okay, so that's got our panning kind of being automated by this randomness uh, with the ramp. And we'll automate a few other things as well while we're here. So I paste that again. We have another set of randomness and ramping, um, which we will send to the um, frequency modulation um, parameters. Uh, so in this case, we're going to have a center frequency of 0 0.4, 5 rather, um, change from point 0 0.1 up to 0 0.9 that um, that will change um, what's equivalent to this first value here which is the modulation index and um, then I can do another automated randomness for the uh, other values as well so what I'm going to do in this time I go from three to three and you can hear that more clearly now that we've got a higher pitch um, put that one in there and as we add all these variations we'll get you can hear that kicking in now we're starting to get a bit more um, modulation action happening in our drone sound um, and I will do one last random variation and this time we'll make this random variation change the volume so we can have it coming in and out a little bit more obviously uh, so I might give it a center volume of 40%, change it by 30% either side, so it gets sort of louder and softer over time. We'll bang that one as well. So now we've got this tone. That was the volume kicking in there. And you've got one thing that's working, a nice trick is just to create a second. A bit and with this second one we might move the frequency back down a little bit I'll start that going as well actually what I might do is just make it so this changes at a slightly different rate so they're out of phase in terms of their changing Okay, so we have these two drones now running. The second one will kick in soon. You'll start to hear it. Uh, we've got our background kind of clicky noise um, and our little kind of bassy, almost frog-like delay sound um, there. The last thing we'll add for this kind of atmospheric kind of paddy thing is some um, just some sort of washy noise things that are going on. So let's start again noise source um, put that through a VCF for a filter like so and then it's got to be amplitude modulated um, and then we're going to also do all this panning and output stuff and so instead of retyping all that I'm just going to copy it from somewhere else so that will go in there but we need to be able to um, modulate, set the frequency cutoff um, and so forth. So we're going to use another one of our combinations of randomness and ramping. Um, we might change the ramp to be a little faster than it was before for the other things. Um, and this is going to be our frequency cutoff. So we need different values. I might have a center frequency of 3000 deviation of 2000 so it ranges between 1 and 5 and then I can set that in there uh, but now of course I need to make sure that I'm triggering all of this um, so let's maybe grab a whole other metro process use that one up here um, don't want to always do it so we're going to add a gate so that you do it some of the time but not all of the time that'll help 
filter those out that would trigger the change in filter um, but we haven't yet got a change in amplitude it's still sitting at zero uh, so we need to do another V line with a message box um, this time we'll have a slow attack and a slow release get a sort of swelling kind of effect. We need to also trigger that whenever we're triggering things. We can turn that on. So you can hear we've got that sort of ocean-like sound. Um, what we might also do is to um, automate the panning on this. We've got a panning automation thing here. We'll just drag, copy that, paste it down here. Do that. Just update the time. So it's not going quite so long. Make sure that gets triggered every time that is done. So that'll move it around in panning. And like we did for the um, sounds earlier I'll turn that down a little bit as well as we did for the sounds earlier which are these drone sounds um, when you've got one of these things just to make it more interesting if we add two we get So here's um, all of our parts. So when we're done, when we turn off these metronomes, they will eventually come to a stop. Okay, so there you have it. So we're particularly introducing um, the ramp function from the live coding toolkit, uh, using random with that quite often to do the kind of drone processes. Um, the other live coding toolkit objects like Panner and Echo and Out and FM, we have seen in other videos, but if this is the first one you've watched, there's um, an introduction to those. You can see some of the other videos for more details on those or have a look at the help. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video.